Yo guys, they just dropped the patch notes for the upcoming August 1st to August 3rd playtest that's happening for Supervive pretty soon. And I figured I'd run through these playtest patch notes and tell you guys all that I think you need to know about them. I'm a rank one peak playtester for Supervive, so I figure I should go through all these and explain to you guys my thoughts on how I think the changes will affect the meta um, or just how the game will play as a whole. So um, jumping right into it, we have some things that are there but aren't super, super important. Um, You'll get some money for free cosmetics that you get to mess around with for this next play test. So those are cool, but you won't get to keep them. Um, they're changing controls. Nothing too crazy here. If you want to keep your old ones, you should go and save your files um, in this location prior to the play test. But yeah, um, something that is important to know, you can insta. I, I guess I hit it there. <laughs> you can instant double tap the um, the loot key on a death box to auto loot it now. So you don't need to like hit it and then move your mouse on it to catch it. So that's something that's useful. It requires one less little mechanical skill check if you're trying to do it really quickly. Um, yep, new crosshair customization. So feel free to mess around with that. Um, there's actually like a couple of pretty interesting things you can do in that, like having little things to indicate how many dash charges you have, um, ammo count, that's not really that important, but um, ability cooldowns, like those are all quite useful that you can mess around with and they'll be in the settings. Um, UI updates, whatever. And here we're starting to get into like the actual changes. Um, Instead of the bosses spawning like they used to, they'll now spawn kind of like the like the airdrops do randomly late in the game. They'll just show up and drop in um, with a 60 second timer instead of a 30 second timer. So that's pretty interesting. Um, they say here there's a lot of new choke points on the map, but they're like kind of small uh, little changes like adding like a couple boxes here and there. So nothing too, too crazy. However, they did rearrange a lot of the beacons. Um, again, these aren't going to be super like crazy game changing overall but they'll allow certain things like for example the beacon that's available that used to be available inside of a vault in um for the location name but the one that's at the bottom left of the map that's now outside of the vault so you can actually use that as like a viable reliable place to res so uh make sure to hop into the map when the game's going on or come check out my stream and i'll, I'll i can help explain some of those things um a big change that they're doing is that they're now adding these forges on the map. So the forges are just areas that you can go and repair your armor for free. They used to be in the game, they used to do random other things, but now they um, will repair your armor for free, which is very useful because now the armor repairs that you get after that you used to get after killing somebody, um, they only get you one bar instead of two. So basically, it's going to affect a lot of like the way that fighting works in the game. Um, you're going to be a lot more low resource after fighting in terms of your armors. So after you fight, you're going to really need to be having a lot more consistently towards a bonfire um, or towards a forge. Granted, there are a lot of forges on the map. Just be aware that while you're doing the forges, you're very visible and um, you make a loud sound. So don't all do it at once and like send a couple of your teammates to scout around. On top of that, um, the hot drop zone has been changed. Instead of it being one zone, it can now be uh, one zone of four of the gold armors, two zones of two of the gold armors, or um, four zones with each having one armor. Whereas before there was only one zone and it would have all the armors, it would have two inside the vault and then two inside of the chest randomly around. Now it is no longer functions like that. So that's something to keep in mind in terms of like when you load into a match and you see how the hot drop zone is. If you don't go there, it's something to like, you know, understand of like, oh, if there's only one hot drop zone, then probably there's gonna be one team walking around with all golds ready to crush you if they show up. Um, whereas before, or whereas now it could potentially be just like a bunch of teams with golds and it's not something to really like worry about. So on top of that, um, they messed around with the audio distances. So now instead of having, instead of the, the audio being pretty relatively short distance around you, um, they've bumped up the sounds of gliders, footsteps, opening chests, grind rails, nukes, and um, like when you accidentally step on something and break something. So realistically, it's going to be a lot like you should just expect that people are going to know where you are more than you were prior to that. So that's something else to consider. Um, they have smart date updates, but like, you know, whatever. <laughs> and then they've added two new storm ships. They aren't super crazy. Um, this one, berry season, just add some more berries in the bushes nearby. And so it's kind of like yeah, you can stop mid fight and heal yourself and stuff like that, but it's nothing like, you know, so crazy that you need to be like really thinking about it. Um, 
and then there's home bases. There's no more base camps on the map and it said whoever is the drop leader spawns with a base camp. And so you kind of just like kill a team to find them. It's nothing super crazy for like standard gameplay. Maybe for like more organized scrim gameplay would change things up. But yeah, nothing too insane with any of this stuff. However, now we're getting into the hunter changes. Um, so for the first section of this, there were certain characters that are getting uh, sort of an indirect nerf of having a bug fix changed. So Bishop, Aluna, Jewel, Kingpin, Shiv, Void, and Zeph. Whereas before they wouldn't slow themselves as much as they should have been with the built-in self slow that characters have. Um, these ones will be getting a lot more, especially if they're firing quickly. So this is something to like think about how it's functioning. Um, and you'll definitely need to like, if you're playing any of these characters, you need to kind of just go like mess around with them and see how it different it feels. And uh, yeah. However, um, with that, we're moving on to Brawl. Brawl got some nerfs, but I don't really think it's going to be changing him too, too much. The biggest ones is with his uh, his quick dash. The dash now only has two charges at its base level, and you have to level it up to three to get the three charges. So that's something that's really important to change to understand. Um, the spin and charge dash and the charge dash don't have, or the spin and charge dash no longer have incorporeal on them. That people probably didn't really notice there anyway because they were super super small. So this doesn't really affect much. Um, the charge dash being reduced in speed and distance is potentially quite a, like damaging, but it really depends on how much they actually changed it. Um, I suspect he should be pretty fine with that still. And then they made it so execution slam straight to death box only happens in brawls empowered. So if you've dealt enough damage to get empowered, then it's the same. If not, then you won't one shot them, but like, or you won't straight to death box them, but realistically, it's not like the craziest of changes either. Um, yeah. After this, we have a couple of a bit of a, a buff to counteract some of this because they wanted to try and shift the power of his movement into his tether change tether chain and so now you can mess around with it more based on your WASD, wasd input and your cursor facing so if you like are swinging towards the top and you put your cursor out towards the right you'll swing out more um so you can kind of just maneuver a bit more so you should mess around with that and see how that feels for you and um then if you reactivate the tether glide use spin slash or just swing around, you'll be able to maintain your momentum a lot more so you can fly further. So you might be able to get even more distance with your base movement if you're just using it on like a rock or something like that. Um, and then attacking will also allow you to slow down. So these are all like quality of life tethers. It seems like they want the tether to be like what you engage with. So that's basically probably gonna be your, your main engagement tool um, versus like charge dash as it was before. So nothing too crazy on Brawl. He's not like absolutely just cooked. So I wouldn't worry about things too much. Um, and I would just give him a try. Maybe there's a chance like there's a chance they kind of butchered him, but yeah, doubt it. I mean, he still has like all the resources he really needs. Right. So um, for the Celeste changes, this actually isn't a change. This is not true. <laughs> it's uh, like they said that they made it so she couldn't cancel her ultimate to explode it early. But like last play test, but that wasn't actually the case. So they reverted something that they didn't even change. So, you know, great. Moving on. Um, for Aluna, she now has a 20% 20, 20 slow on her backpack when she's carrying allies. This, um, and it says it doesn't stack, so don't worry about like picking up multiple allies and like getting giga slowed. Um, I don't really expect this to be like something that's too crazy. It, you know, with sometimes with how these numbers work in terms of like momentum and stuff like that, it can cause like weird things to happen, but probably considering it's only 20% anyway, um, she should be pretty fine, especially because her dash still lets her travel a lot of distance and also get resets. If you like dash on top slash through your downed ally, you get uh, like a, a reduction in the timer on it. So you can still move like more than enough um, and it really shouldn't be a problem. She should still be quite a solid character. Uh, moving on to Ghost, we have some buffs that he just didn't need really. So um, for his ion cannon, his, you know, big laser beam, you can now turn it by an increased 10%. That's what, you know, yaw is sideways, like turning type stuff. Um, and then he also gets the cooldown lowered by 50% on his minimum dash. So it was knocking it down to a minimum of 3.5 seconds ish. 
and now it'll be at like 1.75. So probably if you use that plus a jump, you'll be able to get like quite a solid amount of movement really. So this is probably kind of a giga buff for him. He didn't need it. He was still a very strong character. People just don't really play him. So yeah, you know, I don't know what to say about that one. Um, with Jewel, Jewel is where things get a little bit more testy. Um, a lot of people are kind of concerned that this is a really big nerf to Jewel, and I don't really think so. I think it's more of a playstyle shift. So um, I'll run through it and I'll explain all that. So when the old pa the passive is supposed to work where any sort of stacks you have on people, as soon as the like five second duration or whatever it is timer has occurred where you haven't shot somebody, um, they would fall off like completely all of them. And so that's probably not like, uh, like that. that's obviously a pretty big nerf, but like you really shouldn't have been like allowing that to happen in the first place and like hitting someone with a primary is still pretty easy to do in general. So um, you should realistically be able to maintain the stacks you need on people. And so in addition to that, they made the orb pickup collision height a lot higher. So the orb that, you know, resets your dash entirely. And so that's a good quality of life buff. And you don't have to worry about being like too physically high above something or too low to like try and hit it properly. So that's like a decent compensatory change here. Um, the lightning bolt LMB no longer spawning lightning orbs. That's just irrelevant. Like it's whatever. You shouldn't have been relying on those anyway. Um, the lightning spear is where she gets some of her biggest changes. So. It now has a 0.15 second wind down on it, meaning you couldn't, you can't shoot a primary fire immediately after you fire it. Because what people were doing is they were shooting a primary fire, then they were right, like they were RMBing, and then they were immediately firing another primary fire to hit, um, I think that's a full four stack or like a three stack. I forgot how much the Lightning Spirit does exactly, it's one or two. Um, and so you can't do that anymore, though it's only 0.15 seconds, so you can still do it like right after that, but yeah. Um, they made it so the max time, max charge time is increased from 0.75 seconds to one second, and the damage is down. <clears throat> the damage itself isn't down like tremendously bad. As you can see, it's 206 plus 115 percent to 140 to 78 percent, which is like um, I don't know the exact numbers. I think it's something. I think the max AP you can get is 320 ish. Like that's the baseline AP. Um, and so you're looking at having like 500 base damage before versus like having. Um, 400 ish something like that 350 and so that's not a huge change but the chain and this is just from like the hit right this isn't from hitting them into a wall because you get extra damage then um the biggest issue is that the damage now scales based on the charge time so if you tap it you would get like full damage before and now you don't right and so it would only be useful for like knockback but it seems you get the full knockback knockback distance so it's still powerful um yeah and um, then it's rebuffed by having cooldown reduction actually working because apparently cooldown reduction wasn't working properly on it. So overall, definitely a nerf to that though. Uh, and so with the shift dash, Jewel is no longer immune to damage while dashing, uh, but she is still immune to the crowd control effects. So really this isn't insane either. Like the crowd control is what would really be stopping her. If you're dashing in such a way that you're taking too much damage or you're dashing like directly into a strike auto, you're kind of trolling anyway. So realistically, um, and so they made it feel better too by making the wall like the collision explosion at the end too short. So now you can hit it a lot higher. So again, if you're like above or below something, like it won't, it will connect a lot easier. Um, and they increase the hitbox of it. And they made it so that if you were to actually explode people with like the damage of the, the ability rather than the damage of the pop afterwards, that it wouldn't reset it. So you're going to get more consistency on resetting the dashes too. Now, here's where like all these general quality of life slash like debuffs with the uh, RMB come in is that you're getting a huge buff to the ultimate. Um, instead of it just landing on somebody and then giving them an orb that you can dash through, now it applies one stack to the target you land on and then it'll spread the highest number of stacks onto every enemy that's in, um, it says a large radius, but I believe that large radius is the dist like the radius of the ultimate itself. It's like the location that you can land on. And so basically, if you activate that, if you stack someone up to three stacks, and then you activate this when you're standing nearby them, or you land on them, um, you'll stack a whole team. And so you could get literally four dashes between the whole enemy teams and just absolutely crush them. 
So yeah, that's literally insane. Um, and so that's where like the, the changes of this, right? Instead of her having this like, I could just easily destroy a single target, which she'll still be able to do pretty reliably. It's now more oriented towards stacking a single target to have them and use them as a, you know, a victim to spread all of this stuff onto their teammates. So it seems bad probably at first, but I think she'll still be very powerful and uh, her ultimates like got a lot of potential value and that sort of stuff. So, um, right. So for Kingpin, we're getting Kingpin actually basically nearly entirely entirely reverted to what he was like back when they did this patch called slow key patch where they took some value out of his um his dashes and put it into his hook for some reason which was really bad and so what we're getting is when you hook people you no longer they no longer float you over the abyss if you're like in the abyss um so you can't be expecting to like go hook them over the abyss and stand there in the air so you can slam them if you do that, it won't work. You'll fall. Um, however, if you fall, they will like get thrusted downwards. So maybe you'll get a guaranteed kill anyway most of the time. Not sure how that's gonna work. Seems like not entirely, but it's like if you maybe if you caught them lower in the abyss, you'd kill them. Um, however, the big counter buff to that is if you hook someone and you pull them over towards the edge, you will ground them still. So if you hook someone and pull them to the edge, you get a free slam because they're grounded and they can't escape it um, and they can't move enough to dodge it. So you trade like this jump in the air. I hook you over the abyss and slam you to like, I just pull you towards the edge and slam you. So that's a complete revert. Um, the iron smash slam ability no longer like thrusts you as hard downwards. So it should make it easier to aim. That's not a huge change. Um, but the dash cooldown got reduced, not like super duper reduced, but like a pretty hefty amount. Um, the the small dash got a one and then a half and a half second reductions on its dashes and the dash cost reduction is actually pretty nice. Um, you're no longer eating like, oh, they, never mind. They, they buffed the big dash. Okay, cringe. But anyway, they like, they rearranged some of the mana cost, which is okay. Not that big of a deal. Um, then they reduced this, the, the dash cooldown. It's not insane because realistically you probably should have been like tripling out the the dash anyway but maybe you can get away with not doing that and then doing another one now it's not a huge change to kingpin um so for myth myth got some more changes that might seem quite different but they're really not that different fundamentally with how she plays so before her primary fire had like three states it had a, a base state and then it had a empowered and then it had a supercharged state <clears throat> and the supercharged state would give it like the empowered state would give it more damage more distance and then the uh the supercharged state would give it even more distance and so what would effectively happen i think a bit, i think a bit more damage too and if you release it like right as the green or the the blue like the empowered or the supercharged state popped you would get like a faster empowered charge so a faster first state charge not an empowered second state charge but just an empowered first state charge um, so you could basically get in this flow state where you were like slowing shoot and then shoot and then you could keep like shoot, 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 shoot really quickly. And so basically what you'd have is you'd have like, if people were close to you, you would fire it quickly repeatedly on the blue and you keep hitting people or the, the half charge green that they're calling this like empowered. And if people were far away, you still full charge to blue and you need to release it when it hit blue or like reduce the damage. Um, they basically just cleaned it up. So now instead of getting this like flow rate, fire rate, speed increase, um, the shot distance, speed, and damage are just holding, are increasing just across the line with LMB charge. Um, and it has the same sort of effect of increasing the damage for the first half of the charge a lot more than it does later on. So effectively, um, spamming a close range target with the green is still gonna have the highest amount of damage. And then blue is gonna be best for fire or long distance. Um, and instead of getting the other buff at, releasing it at like the blue or the green charged moments, super powered and then charged moments. Um, instead of that, like increasing your fire rate, you now get a reduced self slow. So it functionally works the same. It just doesn't seem like it does. Or, you know, it just works the same in how you want to be using it. All right. So primal forces, the uh, ultimate got a 
a little bit of a modification here. There's no more execution damage on the final shot, so, you know, she won't explode a low target at the end anymore. Um, however, they buffed, they buffed the base damage on it to compensate for that. This is probably a, a just a neutral change overall. We have to see, like, exactly how much, um, you know, the, like, how that really ends up being. But, yeah, the execution damage is only on the last shot anyway. So, um, you can't see it here very well, but Rain of Arrows, the other ability, the, like, shooting a giant spread of arrows that is miserable to play against, <laughs> that ability is also changed. Um, now, instead of having anti-heal it from four seconds, it's only on three seconds. However, you used to get like slowed the entire time that you were you were anti, so you were slowed for like four seconds after walking through it. It was um, like really weird. I don't really know if it was supposed to be working like that. Uh, it, yeah, it, it was weird. Uh, I'm not sure how that worked. It was, it was just, but you were very, very, very getting slowed. And so now it says you only be slowed from taking damage and sound of the arrow. Uh, but they've buffed this so that the slow when you are like taking damage is gonna be 0.6 seconds So as soon as you walk out of that, you're no longer getting you're only get sun for 0.6 seconds more or slowed. Sorry uh, So overall this should also be a bit of a nerf maybe like I don't know it, it, it maybe it's a nerf a little bit Overall it, it really should be but this is still a very strong ability for myth um, Yeah, so moving on so Oath has gotten a increase to his base HP scaling. He now has maximum scaling. The so a full tank Oath build will be at 3117 HP instead of 2710, um, which considering his base is like 1700 or something like that is a pretty hefty bonus instead of him getting like an additional 1000, he's getting an additional 1400. So 40% HP increase. Uh, or, you know, 40% value increase on using HP items. Uh, so, yeah, and they, you know, mention, of course, his shield and heal also scales HP, so HP builds will be better on Oath. Not to say they're meta or anything, or that he's meta, but they'll be better. Shiv ended up getting some adjustments. Um, there was a bug fix where her left shift and powered shots were double applying malice. That probably wasn't insane. Her trick shot no longer bounces off walls, which is um, it's a it's a pretty solid nerf like it would just randomly bump off of things and, and just catch extra people It just shouldn't have sometimes so it no longer does that um, But if you're using the ability well, it shouldn't really like affect too much They increase the cooldown for cartwheel by one second, but also it's like if you're just hitting your shots It won't affect you So this also isn't insane and then they slightly nerfed her her death blossom shots by like a very a very slight amount like a 5% nerf probably total and then her max execution damage per shot was reduced so again like nothing insane she's basically the same <clears throat> the void changes occurred also we got some void changes his shift has a 25 percent increase in speed now so instead of it taking right, around 25 percent 20 percent Instead of him having a projectile speed of two seconds activation from launching it to not launching it, it's 1.6 seconds, which I'm not sure affects how that affects when he's um, empowered. Presumably that's also increased a little bit, but we'll find out about that one. And then he gets a, an interesting little buff here of um, his place down black hole ability, hitting a strong slow on enemy when they're caught by it. So if someone's like dashing over your ability, you can pop it to catch them and yoink him out of it and hit a pretty pretty heavy slow and then grounding them for half a second. So that's honestly like kind of a pretty hefty buff. It was already a powerful ability and now it has a whole extra capability. So Void is definitely significantly better um, on this patch because of that. So um, they also for some reason decided to buff Zeph. This character did not need to be buffed at all and uh, all the people I've talked to or the top Zeph players have repeated this exact statement. But uh, yeah, he gets a pretty solid like 8% speed boost just on his base movement. That's a big deal. That's like the difference between having uh, movement items versus not just like a free movement item. And then, um, yeah, so he gets that. And then now he's also getting the ability to restore mana when hitting an enemy by 20, which is like pretty decent too. Um, with some quality of life changes. 
And then on top of that, they are giga buffing the base of his grenade. So instead of on 16 seconds at the start, it's at 13. And then the level two, it's 12 versus uh, now being 11. So we're losing three seconds, then one second on that. Granted, the level three is on nine seconds, so that's a little bit of a nerf, but having this power early on is, is worth that exchange. And then they buffed the damage at level one and then nerfed the damage at level three a little bit. So it's kind of a power shifting for the, the grenade, but a, a buff overall, I'd say. Especially because they're increasing the cooldown on the slow from 0.7 seconds to 0.9. And so the slow only occurs when you hit one target, but it's just going to make reliably using that to like counter an enemy that's diving you or something like that. That's alone uh, more impactful. And then they increase the stun duration from 0.7 seconds at all levels to 0.7. 0.95 and 1.2. That's kind of an insane change. Um, having a nade that lands and is at a, a 1.2 second cooldown for catching multiple enemies and stunning them is like the difference between being able to launch like, you know, between one of your allies having a little bit more time to react to land like a strong ability on them or you yourself being able to chunk that for more damage. So this is like pretty darn impactful. And then um, they modified the cyclone dash a little bit to make it so you're on less of a cooldown when you dash. Nothing too crazy. Um, but to counter all of this, kind of, they have given a uh, reduction on the heals that he gives himself from his ultimate down to 50%. So, you know, but realistically, that's not something he like was relying on, I guess. So not too crazy for him either. Um, yeah, so that's all the character changes. Uh, but there were a couple more things for the game as a whole. So there's a couple more powers here. They basically have added a cleanse ability, which you can find in the game. I'm not sure what rarity it's going to be, but uh, it's going to be very useful because of all the slow, the slow stuns, roots, grounds, and anti heals that you can now just delete off of you. Um, like this is the difference between like you know being caught in this Zeph grenade and then hitting it and walking away from it, like you know all happy. <laughs> it's like yeah, guys, and later, right? Um, yeah, so that's very useful. They've added touch based abilities. So if you just walk into an ally, you'll get, um, you know, you'll trade each other. Or you'll give yourself both some HP. This one is like probably all right. It depends on the character, um, really. I don't really know if this one is going to be that crazy. Like 15% HP for both of you isn't really that insane, especially because you have to like physically commit yourself onto them to do it. So like certain characters, like, you know, I don't know, like in a Luna or something, isn't gonna like get that much value from doing this sort of thing. Um, Touch of Mana is like, again, pretty solid, like 40% max mana restore is pretty valuable, but there's probably still better mana items in the game. Um, Touch of Speed is one that's like, maybe more useful because you can trigger it before you engage. Like if you're playing like whatever character, you could, you could pop it onto your shiv before they engage or your shiv could just run into any of your own allies to like give yourself some extra movement speed to dodge people's attacks when you go in. And considering how like useful movement speed is, that's like potentially a very viable one to have. Um, so that's that's one worth looking into. And then crisis dash is insane. It resets your movement ability when you go below 50% HP. So if you're playing an Oathbreaker, right? And you have this, this is like a free like I can just go into and go jump on the enemy team with no concerns in my life because if I end up taking too much damage, well, guess what? My movement cooldown's back and I just jump away, right? Easy clap. And then they added a little four fun one, which is probably some cool stuff you can do. Um, you become a tree. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it won't quite like people will be able to tell us to you if they shoot at you, but you can be punched. So if you're playing with like a the rocket jumper, a bishop, then just uh, have her punch you and send you into the enemy team, which is fun. Um, they did, however, counteract this by removing some some of them. Unfortunately, um, adrenaline rush wasn't really that viable. Like I'm down for adrenaline rush, burning core, all being gone, mana tap grenade. Um, I did, however, like thorn armor and tree drone. So these are all gone now. Um, so you will not see them for now. They will probably add some back over time though. And then they nerfed some and like modified the power of some things. Creep Cloner, which is just a Pokeball. Though I'm not legally allowed to say that, but I am because I don't work through graphs, so I'll do it. That got nerfed, which is a pretty good nerf because that was like pretty darn strong with certain abilities. Um, Anti-mobility field duration has been reduced, but like 
that's not a big deal because that's a really long time anyway. Um, Chunker Cannon looks to be better, maybe. You can, it's like a lot more viable to be used in the moment. It shoots faster, like with a lower delay, and uh, it only shoot, shoots two, though, it looks like. I'm not really sure exactly how that works. I feel like they shot more than three before, but maybe I'm just crazy. Um, Two-way teleporter cooldown has been buffed or increased from 80 to 100 seconds, and that's kind of a big deal, but two-way teleporter was like a late game, super complicated um, scrim lobby type power to be used anyway. So probably won't affect the average player, you know? And um, yeah, stasis, however, has been giga nerfed. So it now takes 0.2 seconds to activate instead of 0.1, which is twice as long, but obviously it's not that big of a deal. Like that's still a very small time frame. However, it has entirely removed the heal and you can no longer reactivate it to leave it early. It's still good. Like, don't get me wrong. Um, having this to peel yourself and then having like, your own ally heal yourself up afterwards is still very valuable. It's just not this like, I can just go jump into the enemy and pop it and heal myself up and then cancel it when I need to and then be able to reuse it again later just like for a bigger mana cost. Um, it's still very valuable. I think they just League of Legends it. Because I'm pretty sure this is like exactly how the one in League, in League works, but I'm not sure because I don't play the game very much or at all. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and sand wall has been nerfed. There is a warm-up on it, and it has a 20% slow, so it's worse, but still very powerful um, Getting to the end of this stuff they now have a New set of equipment that'll spawn I think these would these are what they were talking about earlier when they said that like there's gonna be new bosses that'll spawn randomly and so These are gonna be early valuable resources you can fight for so we have a skeleton keyblade this will make it so interacting with any vault instantly opens it and gives you the bonus chest that you would get for hitting all or hitting like the, the little mini game seven times in a row. This is really good. Um, emergency boots will give you a an emergency platform at your feet. And so like literally you can just like run across and it like keeps spawning them. So it's like completely bypasses problems with fighting on water or I'm pretty sure it would work on water. Uh, it should. Um, magma, like the spicy water that'll kill you up in the ice area. You know, so good too. Um, the multi-tool is pretty nasty because this is, you know, a, it's like a full damage item and then it gives every secondary science. So you're going to get like speed, bam. Um, uh, what the, like the ability haste. What's the other stuff? I don't even remember. Whatever, my brain's fried, apparently. And then it also lets you pick up base camps for free and repair Ruby and beacons for free. So this is really useful because you just get to walk around and just get it when you want and just like toss them out and go have fun. Um, UAV Helm will give you exact locations. So it works like Kaiju Eye. Also very valuable. And then Golden Gauntlets will give you a access to a high trident for 777 gold. And so these will like randomly spawn throughout the map and they're just like an extra little thing for you to play for. They are good, but they're not like insane. Um, so it's cool to see something like this in the game because like I said, there's something to play for but not something that's like Oh, I have like a tier 5 orange armor quality of stuff. That's just like I'm just taking like 15% less damage than you are for like twice as long as you type thing um, So it's good to see things like this out of the game and then um, for the deathmatch players We got some changes which are questionable to be honest Basically, they've made it so you have evil chests now spawn um, and they spawn like a set of powers from a special table and players can have one of these however you keep them when you don't like when you win a round and um basically it's just gonna like allow like a lot more snowballing in, in arena which is kind of like not really the purpose of of this sort of stuff like i don't you know i don't i don't think it's very good right because like okay maybe say we're, your team wins the first round and then their team wins the second round and they just like choose not to kill you so that they can get this evil chest, get themselves a power, and then they have an advantage in the next fight. And it's just like, it's not really what I think arena should be based around. Arena is like testing out your characters, mechanically min-maxing type stuff. And instead they're just like, you have this sort of thing. Um, getting knocked in sudden death over time means you go straight to death box. Like, I mean, whatever, it's not that big of a deal. But when you capture the bonfire now, you get green armor, um, which isn't a crazy change. But it's just like, again, it's just another snowball mechanic they've added. Nothing like 
too insane again, but it's just kind of, um, kind of unnecessary, right? And uh, now they, uh, you get extra XP. <laughs> Great, right? So, yeah, guys, that's everything. I'll be, uh, I'll be streaming the playtest. This playtest uh, from the first to the third, and then there's a tournament on the fourth that I'll also be doing. So, yeah, guys, feel free to stop in my stream and ask me any questions you guys have or just come hang out. Um, and my links are in my, my bio or whatever on YouTube. It's all done here. Just look it up. <laughs>